Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host, known as the Private Money Authority. And if this is your first time tuning in to our podcast show, either on iTunes or YouTube or Roku or Amazon Prime or any, any of the different formats that we have, I want to welcome you, particularly this is your first time. On the show, we typically talk about all things related to real estate investing, single family houses, apartments, land, self-storage, et cetera. And as you may have heard, I'm known as the Private Money Authority because since 2003, we've been investing in single family houses in Eastern North Carolina. We've done over 400 rehabs. But back in 2009, we got cut off from the banks with no notice, had to find a different way to fund our deals. And so I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money, which has allowed me to never miss out on a deal because I didn't have the money. So if you are remotely interested in learning about how to get more funding for your deals, it's got nothing to do with your hard money lender or your mortgage company or your banker, then get right on over to after the show to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Well, if you've been tuning into the show, you know that typically, as I said, we talk about topics related to real estate investing. And again, if you have tuned into the show for any number of times, you know I talk a lot about having a servant's heart. And whether you're in real estate investing or any profession, and as it relates to personal relationships and all facets of your life, having a servant's heart is what will get you to where you want to be. And it helps make your life a lot happier on the way there. Well, with that in mind, I've got a very, very special guest today. His name is Todd Domarice, and Todd has got a very, very unique story. Todd was in the military for a number of years. He was raised in Michigan. And when Todd was at the age of 23 years old, he joined the army as an infantryman. And while there, he was, he spent 15 years in the army and he was all over the place. He was at the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He was over in Hawaii. He was in Fort Hood, Texas. But then his journey in the army uh, took a turn with some very, very interesting experiences. He found himself in the army over in Afghanistan, also in Iraq. And of course, during the timing of this show and podcast, we've got some very, very interesting scenarios taking place over there in the Middle East. So he was going along, and this goes back to 2004. Todd was in his vehicle and he was hit by two explosive devices simultaneously. His gunner that was in the car with him was killed instantly. Driver had his arm torn apart by shrapnel. Todd himself had large metal fragments uh, go through his helmet, uh, which took him uh, to unconsciousness. And uh, even after the uh, episode, he had shrapnel that was lodged in his, in his skull, and he had to have that surgically removed. So... What an experience that Todd has had in the Army while serving our country. So due to the physical and the psychological injuries that Todd sustained while in Iraq, he became 100% disabled, and he's medically retired as a staff sergeant. So Todd knows all about severe post-traumatic stress, severe migraine headaches, residual effects, and et cetera. And because of his service, Todd has received, and I counted his medals, I mean, they're countless medals, but among those, he received the Purple Heart Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, and more others that uh, we don't have time to cover. But with that, I want to first start out by saying thank you to Todd and his service to our country. And the reason Todd is here today is to talk about this wonderful organization that has helped him and his family get from the story I just told you to where he is today. 
and that uh, organization is called the Intrepid Fallen Heroes. So, Todd, welcome to the show. Hey, Jay, how you doing? I'm Thanks doing having. fantastic, and quite the story you've got, Todd. And again, thank you so much for your service. So, let's go back to what happened, and let's hear your story in your own words. Oh, kind of like you said it. Uh, you know, just going down the road in a Upper Arbor Humvee. You know, a vehicle was hit with uh, two IEDs simultaneously. Killed my gunner, took out me and my driver. From there, you know, we were taken back to the to the base. You know, got some basic first aid and flown out of there to get more help. Once we made it back to the states, made it back here for a while. You know, made a you know, I would say full recovery. It took a very long time for my recovery, but then it wasn't until that was 2004, and then it wasn't until 2013 where I was introduced to NICO. Somebody said that I'd be an excellent candidate for it. Back in 2004, there wasn't a lot known about brain injuries back then. And since then, they had been, been starting up the, the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. The, uh, the center is called the Intrepid Spirits and the NICO, the National Intrepid Center of Excellence. And I was referred to go there. And I went, went there for a whole month, full 30 days evaluation and treatment which basically covered about I want to say about two and a half years worth of treatment for me which is you know phenomenal wow two and a half years correct yep all in a four-week time period if you can believe that because there's so much crammed in there but they cover you from head to toe inside and outside so they they understand every last little bit that's going on with you and where you've been where you came from so from there for me not knowing you know they, like I said they didn't know a lot about the TBIs or traumatic brain injuries. So I had my very first MRI what, like nine years later, almost nine years later. And it's with the, you know, state of the art equipment. And, and so I'm getting, you know, the best of the best healthcare from this place. And this is for all service members too, not just for MRIs, but all the medical care that they receive there. Going forward, I pushed through there. And then once I finished my treatment there, you know, I was able to move on with my life and like I said, maybe not this for myself, you know, not a hundred percent, but pretty darn close. I would say about 90%, you know, I think I can live a, you know, a healthy, a better life than what I was living, you know, all those years of, you know, torment after, after my injury in Iraq. And then I was, after going to the, the National Intrepid Center of Excellence, the, the so-called, let's say, mothership that's in Bethesda, Maryland, I got a phone call one day saying, hey, uh, we'd like you to help spread the word for us. And I said, anything I can do to help. And so anytime I get a chance to, to talk to the public, talk to people like yourself, um, that I can help get this word out about what the Perfect Fallen Heroes Fund does, I'm all for it. I'm proud to be here. I'm very ecstatic to be here. Well, that's great. I appreciate you taking the time to come share time with me and the audience. So tell us, what does the Intrepid group do? Well, uh, the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund is a national nonprofit organization that supports the American military personnel and their families. They're currently building a series of treatment centers for service members suffering from traumatic brain injuries. Uh, they're called the Intrepid Spirit Centers, like I said. And they're built at the military bases around around the United States, not just Army, but, you know, Army, Marines, Air Force, to name a couple. I'm not sure about the others, but so they're not just to, toward one service. Uh, we have seven open right now, and eighth is under construction as we speak, and then uh, we're still looking for uh, funds to uh, build two more Intrepid Centers, Intrepid Spirit Centers. I got you. So, so where does the funding come from? for the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund? Well, the, the funding comes from... Um, I mean, is it mostly individuals that are contributing to the fund, or is the fund relying, like, you know, totally on individual contributions? We are 100% from donation. We take no money from the government. So basically all the American people that, that donate to help these... these uh, Intrepid centers get built, 100% of the donation goes toward these buildings because there's no uh, underlying 
all the donations are from the, the American people that help. Yep. I got you. I saw in your uh, bio that uh, you were treated specifically at the National Intrepid Center of Excellence. And so is that one of the intrepid uh, centers that you're talking about? That is. Uh, that is, like I said, like I said, an easy way to say it, like the mothership uh, intrepid spirit buildings, which are sort of say uh, satellite buildings. They're, these are the ones that are around, that were building around uh, the different military installations that each cost between 12 and $14 million. Oh, wow. Yeah, but like I said, they are getting, you know, it, it's so much, so much easier when they're at the military installations for service members to get help, as opposed to trying to take um, service members all to Bethesda, Maryland. Mm -hmm. I got, well, I was gonna ask you, what are the benefits or some of the benefits that you received on your care that you needed after all the trauma, what were the benefits of you getting your treatment, you know, at the Intrepid Center versus somewhere else? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's any different because some people do go there. It is, a, it is an outpatient, but you're there five days a week for four weeks. And being there, you know, you get, you're going to get the same treatment as you are at these other, the, uh, these, these Intrepid Spirit Centers mm -hmm. that are uh, built out. They're just easier for service members to get the treatment at. I and got you. The same, the same uh, medical care and, you know, all that good stuff that goes along with right. it. Well, it sounds like that having these centers constructed and built around the different bases makes it so much more convenient for not only the a person that needs the care, but also the family to be there with the service member while they're getting the care instead of having to travel all over the nation. Is that right? You're absolutely right, Jay, because for me, I had to leave from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and I had two young boys, a little bit older now, but <laughs> still I had two young boys at the time. You know, I had to take them to a different state for a month for care and then head on over to Maryland for, you know, for 30 days with my wife. So yeah, definitely being at the military base does provide a lot. The, the couple has children together and the service members injured, you know, they can, I'm sure, you know, probably daycare wherever they're or with another family member there, but it does, it will make it a lot easier for the care to be given by these facilities with the service member being right there, that building being very close to the service member. Right, right. Well, one of the reasons that I wanted to have you here on the show and how I heard about Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund was from my good friend, Lance Edwards, who has been a very successful real estate investor as well in the Florida, or basically he's based out of Houston. But anyway, Lance was telling me this past year that he was so impressed with this organization that you have reaped the benefits from he released uh, his new book last year and the proceeds from that book actually were all given to to this organization intrepid fallen heroes and i as i understand it todd this organization that you've received you know such good benefits from uh, from what i understand the contributions that go to this organization, unlike a lot of other organizations, the intrepid uh, fallen heroes either get to keep most or all of the uh, charitable contributions. Is that correct? Uh, Jay, that is correct. 100% of the donations goes directly toward the building. There's no 90%, 95%, you know, a cut that somebody else takes from it. 100% of the donation goes to supporting these buildings or building these infrastructures to hundred percent. I mean, I, you, there's almost no other organization that does that that I know of. Yeah. That's, uh, I remember Lance telling me about it and he was very, very impressed with that. Well, well, Todd, I know that the audience that we have here would like to learn more about the organization. And I know we've got a lot of viewers and listeners that would like to participate. And I tell you folks, this is a fantastic way to show your appreciation for our military service members that are serving and have had some type of experience like Todd has. So Todd, now how can folks participate and give towards this wonderful organization and uh, learn even more about it and get any other questions answered? Well, they can go to uh, 
fallenheroesfund.org. It's fallenheroesfund.org. On the website, they'll tell you everything you need to know. It'll tell you why and how 100% of the donations go toward these buildings. And spread the word. That's the best way to do it. You know, help donate yourself and, uh, and spread the word. Tell somebody else. And, and kind of like, you know, 100% of donations that go toward the building and, and toward this, you know, the fund. I mean, you, you just can't beat that. Can't beat it at all. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, we're going to put that um, for those that are viewing on uh, YouTube and um, any of our other platforms that people have got the video. So uh, let's give that website out one more time and we'll also have it in the show notes. Absolutely. That is fallenheroesfund.org. Fallenheroesfund.org. That's wonderful, Todd. Well, Todd, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show here with us. Any other uh, information or any other comments you'd like to share um, before we go? Well, I certainly hope we covered it all. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having me on the show. Hopefully, you know, we can reach a couple people that will be more than willing to help out. I mean, it's such an awesome organization, and uh, I love doing this. As, as a service member myself that's been through the treatment in these facilities, it's unreal. You just can't beat that. Can't beat it. I love it. That's wonderful. All right, folks. Well, Todd, thank you so much again for being here on the show. Again, thank you for the service and God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you too, Jay. And uh, whoever's last with you there too, you guys take care. Thank you very much. Bye for now. We'll see you on the next show.